One of the things that we are touching a lot in our organization is that not only the project should be uh, self-organized and um, being the agile way, but we, we try to be an or agile organization. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think we, we can learn uh, from, from your experience? Uh, what, what, how should an, a self-organized um, organization look like? So what is self-organization? You, you have this marine idea. What, do you, what happens with a marine well, that, that is, uh, uh, that is self-organized? Well, yeah, no, I, 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 I'll use two uh, analogies. I, I, I actually, I, I can give you a better analogy. <laughs> that, that, you know, so I would read people writing about Scrum and how what they want to do is they, they want to have uh, everybody good at everything and swarm the and and then whenever a problem shows up, people swarm the problem. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, this reminds me of when my children were learning to play football. To, uh, okay. Football, not in the American sense, soccer yeah, in the in American sense. Yeah. But my my kids, you know, played uh, played football for many years uh, there. And when you see the kids as five year old playing football. They have this, the, the, they basically get the concept, which is you win the game by scoring goals, you score goals by kicking the ball into the net, mm -hmm. and in order to kick the ball, you need to be near the ball. Okay. And so when you watch five-year-olds playing, you see this swarm of kids <laughs> that is traveling around. I don't know if it's that way in Europe, but that's certainly that way in the U.S., is that there's this swarm of kids that is moving around wherever the ball is on the field. And it takes a couple of years of play before people realize that you're better when you play positions mm -hmm. than you can move the ball down the field much faster by playing positions than you can by swarming around the ball. And I think, you know, the great downside in, in ideas like everybody swarms on the current problem and things like that is you give less attention to the things that are not on the critical path, which guarantees those things will get on the critical path. So you right. increase the number of things that are on the critical path of the project. And, and I think you know, in the military and, and, and even in sports and things like that, we tend to, to realize we can't minutely plan everything but we really do benefit from having an overall plan. We, we, you know, instead of having a black curtain at two weeks in the future and we say we don't worry about anything that's happening after two weeks and things like that, it really does make sense to say, are there major events that we need to anticipate and be prepared for? Uh, so, so I'm a little, I, I, I tend to believe you need some alignment mechanisms beyond what you just do in terms of self-organizing and, and working on the thing. And, and I think the, the other issue that I see showing up all the time when people try to scale Scrum is that if, if you look at a small Scrum team, all of the benefits of what they do are local, all of the costs are local, so if you tell them to self-optimize and to, to locally optimize, local optimization is identical with system optimization. Mm -hmm. So you automatically get system optimization by releasing co the authority to that team level. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is when you generalize that and you say that will tr be true in all cases. Yeah. Because once you start having multiple scrum teams, you've got situations where the cost shows up on one team and the benefit shows up on the other team. And the person who's going to get the benefit, they're going to say, let's make the benefit as large as possible. The person who's experiencing the cost is going to want to make the cost as low as possible. So you've got to have some mechanism to get conditions outside of the local team communicated to the other teams you're coordinating mm -hmm. with. And, and it, it's nice to say you can do it all with a bunch of, the, the analogy I used in the, in the military uh, was that if you told a bunch of Marines just self-organize and things, they'd find out in a very short period of time they would have one group of Marines shooting at another <laughs> group of Marines. They, exactly. they, they really feel you need alignment mechanism. You want to have, you love the initiative, you want to encourage the initiative, but you have to have some alignment 
alignment mechanisms to provide focus of that initiative. Right. Otherwise, it becomes random initiative. Yeah, to finish up with that, do you think that the methodologies that we have out there, like less and save, do really help on scaling agile projects? Yes, I, I absolutely do. And I, I think, and I think to, to some extent, because some of those methodologies have been influenced by the things we've learned in the last 40 years of, of doing software, like actually you need to think about architecture ahead of time, you can't do it just in time exactly. and things, uh, is that they're incorporating things like architectural roadmaps and product roadmaps that are actually quite beneficial. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I tend to view it, uh, I think the original scrum thinking that large scale scrum is just a fractal version of small scale mm -hmm. scrum is not a good understanding of how large engineering projects take yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Don. It was a pleasure. Okay. And uh, fantastic to have you here. Well, thank you very much. Thank Bye -bye. you very much.